councillors and uh, CEO and directors. Uh, welcome to this very, very important special meeting of council, which is our budget meeting for 2020-2021. Pay our respects to the Indigenous custodians of the land on which we are privileged to meet, the Yui people, and honour their elders past and present, and recognise their continuing connection to our land and our communities. Welcome to our viewers online, through our Facebook live streaming and also on our YouTube channel. Councillors, for the first time in a decade, this is not the Mayor's budget, this is our budget. And so I thank you for your deliberations, particularly uh, for the new councillors, uh, over the last two months, and for the incumbent councillors uh, carrying over from last term, for your, your interaction with uh, the officers in this budget preparation. It has been a difficult process over the last couple of months to bring down a budget which uh, is reflective of the times that we're in. So we have a, uh, a fairly straightforward agenda, but there's a little bit to get through before we bring this budget down. So there's nobody absent on council business. There's no apologies. I better declare it open. And uh, the only correspondence and officers' reports are about to deal with right now. So the first stage in this budget uh, deliberation is the statement of the estimated financial position You've had the budget papers for a couple of weeks. Are there any questions on 4.1.1? No questions. Would somebody like to move the adoption of the statement of estimated financial position for 2019-2020? Councillor Mann moves. Seconded by Councillor Englert. Councillor Mann. Just briefly, Your Worship, you know, look, we know that we're bringing down a, a deficit budget in extremely difficult times. And I just congratulate everybody that's been involved in the making of this document for their attention to detail, the testing of all the, the different scenarios and the fact that we've arrived at what we have. So it's a big congratulations to the staff. Okay, thank you. So that's, this is for the estimated financial position, <coughs> excuse me, 2019-2020. Any other speakers? It's been moved and seconded. I'll put the, uh, the motion, those in favour, any against. The motion is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. 4.1.2 is the revenue policy. And uh, once again, this is a straightforward document you've had for quite some time, and the revenue policy is uh, as, uh, as outlined in the attachment. Are there any questions? No questions? Would somebody like to move the revenue policy? Councillor Jones, seconded by Councillor Townsend. Councillor Jones. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, our first budget for this term, and a very different one uh, due to COVID-19, uh, my thanks to all of the staff uh, under your leadership, CEO, are applauded to, for the work that they have uh, undergone within this document. Our revenue statement and rating <coughs> resolutions are required under regulation and it sets out the mechanisms by which Council will collect its revenue for the next financial year and its rates and charges and other fees, including any concessions that it may grant. I guess a reminder to our community it is Council's role to act in the best interests of our whole community in making decisions about rates and charges. I look forward to the remainder of our budget. Thank you very much. Speaker against. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion is carried. The Revenue Measures Report is outlined at 4.1.3 of your documents. The Revenue Measures Report, uh, once again, is a fairly straightforward uh, document, but we have a number of motions to pass in the Revenue Measures Report, about 12 of them. Are there any questions before we embark? Okay, so the first one you'll find the, in um, the Differential General Rates. Are there any questions around the Differential General Rates? Would somebody like to move the adoption of the Differential General Rates? Councillor Mann moves, Councillor Anglet seconds. Councillor Mann? Are there any speakers? I'll put the motion, those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Item two is the adoption of the special rates and charges for 2020-2021, as outlined in your document. Uh, are there any questions? Would somebody like to move the adoption of the special rates and charges? Councillor Englert, seconded by Councillor May. Councillor Englert. Thank you. Okay, any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Three, the separate charges that we need to outline for this particular budget for this year. 
A through to D is the separate charges in this one. Are there questions? Would somebody like to move the adoption? Councillor Mann moves, seconded by Councillor Green. Councillor Mann. So the separate charges, A through D, I'll put that motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried, thank you. Motion five in this report of the sewerage utility charges. Pretty well straightforward, that one. Councillor Green moves. Seconded by Councillor Hassan. Councillor Green, any speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried, thank you. So number six. Sorry, the page here. The waste management utility charges, as outlined in your document for 2020. What about we do the trade waste first? Okay, the trade waste, I've got so many tabs on my page here. The trade waste charges, once again, fairly well straightforward. The trade waste charges for this budget. Somebody like to move? Councillor Hassan moves. Councillor Green seconds. Councillor Hassan? Any speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Thank you. And now let's do the waste management utility charges. Once again, fairly well straightforward as a, uh, a motion in this particular revenue measures report. Any questions? Any questions? Somebody like to move its adoption? Councillor Englert moves. Councillor Green seconds. Councillor Englert? Thank you. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Thank you. The water utility charges. Any questions? Somebody like to move? Councillor Englert moves. Councillor Mann seconds. Councillor Englert? Any speakers? I'll push, put the motion. The water utility charges for 2020-2021. Those in favour? Any against? It's carried. Thank you. And we move on now to uh, item 8 in this report, the rates concessions. Are there any questions about the rates concessions? Somebody would like to move the adoption of the rates concessions for this budget period? Councillor Jones, seconded by Councillor Mann. Councillor Jones? Any speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Levy and payment at uh, item 9 in this report. So the uh, resolutions as outlined there in A and B for relating to the levy and payment. Questions? No questions? So we'd like to move the adoption of the levy and payment for 2020-2021. Councillor Englert moves. Councillor Hassan seconds. Councillor Englert? Okay. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried, thank you. The discount for this coming budget period as outlined in your document. Any questions? Somebody would like to move? We adopt the discount. Councillor Mann moves. Councillor Hassan seconds. Councillor Mann. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. The interest under the revenue measures report. Pretty well straightforward under two paragraphs there in the interest. Somebody would like to move the adoption. Councillor Englert moves. Councillor Green seconds. Councillor Englert. Thank you. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. And finally, the related policies. So those policies listed A through H in your documentation of the policies we'll be adopting in this revenue measures report. Any questions? Councillor Green moves. Seconded by Councillor Hassan. Councillor Green. Do you have a question, Councillor Bonamici? No, no, I was just going to say a few words about one of those policies of worship. Oh, you're going to speak to it? OK. Um, you wish to speak, Councillor Green? Nothing. OK. Councillor Bonaventura. You're speaking, for, to one of those you're speaking for, obviously. For the motion. Okay. Uh, just in relation to one of those policies, just quickly, uh, the concession for concealed leaks. I hope I'm in the right section. Uh, <laughs> yes, you are, yes. Thank you. I just wanted to state that uh, this morning, during the ordinary council meeting, we spoke in relation to... Uh, the My H2O and the benefits a couple of councillors were happy enough to, to tell us about. And I think it's important we note that the eligibility to receive those concessions <coughs> states when an AMR is installed on the water meter at the property and the property owner has registered for My H2O and has active, alert, uh, active leak alerts in place. So I think that's, that's critical and I say to people out there, sign up to My H2O and you will be eligible to receive our concessions policy should you have uh, a concealed leak that, that was undetectable. So right. I thought I'd, I'd mention that you were. Thank you, Councillor Bonaventura. The other speakers. So we're adopting the policies A through H as part of the revenue measures report. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. 
Uh, thank you, councillors. Well, let's move on then to the, uh, the budget. For 2020-2021. So, councillors, for the first time in a decade, as I said before, uh, this is no longer the Mayor's budget, this is the Council's budget. And I thank you for your presentations, uh, for your representations, and for your interaction to able for us to be able to bring this budget forward today and as a Council adopt what is a very difficult budget for 2020-2021. We have a uh, budget presentation that we'd like to go through now so that it quickly outlines what this budget means for us. It's a $306 million budget. So it's a little smaller than we're used to bringing down, but at $306 million, it's still quite a substantial budget. And you may have seen in the uh, news, there's been a little bit of uh, repartee about rate freezes. As you will well know, we raised that question ourselves right at the start of this whole budget deliberation. And we were told under the law, it is not possible to freeze the rates. And so we have done as a council the next best thing. We have decided, not to raise any more money than we raised in the last budget period in this budget, which means a 0% increase in revenue year on year. And we are required by law to raise the cents in the dollar on the valuation of our properties. That's the way we raise our general rates, as you know. Fortunately, in this period, we've had the first valuation imposed upon us by the state for the first time in three years. That obviously means that there are some differences in the values of our properties, and we've got 52,000 of them. So we'll go into that a little bit later on. But for this council, and I commend you for it, the 0% increase revenue year on year is a brave move. The budget has no reduction in services. It's a COVID response budget, and it's a deficit budget. We are bringing a budget today which has a $5 million deficit attached to it. And that is probably the biggest deficit we've dealt with at this council uh, almost ever, except there was one a few years ago, but there was, there was some write-offs attached in this one. In terms of operational outcome, this will be the biggest focus for us. So what are we doing in the budget? It's a livable, it's a livable community that we're actually trying to promote. We're trying to stimulate the economy still with this budget. We're improving the recovery chances for our community. We're obviously improving our efficiencies in council. We're reducing our borrowings and we're paying a great deal of attention to asset management. So what does it look like? Our COVID support we'll go into in a little bit. We are spending $113 million in capital. So it's a little bit less than the last couple of years, but at $113 million, that is a significant investment for this council. As you know, we spend, in terms of our operational budget, we are spending our depreciation plus whatever we get from the state and the feds. We are reducing debt yet again by around about $15 million. And when you look at the last five years of this council, there's been upwards of $50 million carved off our debt level. The cash reserves still stand at $126 million. There's, as I said, a 0% change in our revenue rate year on year and no cuts, no cuts to service levels. In terms of our COVID response, it's cost us $7 million. And this is the way that $7 million has been delivered. When we say we are not going to change the revenue year on year, despite the fact that the Consumer price index has been running at around about 2% or just under 2% in March. By us not changing our revenue, it's cost us $3.7 million. We've also got $1.2 million in special community grants for the COVID relief program. This is where our organisations and sporting clubs in our community have the opportunity to apply for operational funds to keep them afloat, to pay for things like insurance, and rates and all the things, electricity, all the things that a service organisation or a community sports organisation can't afford to pay for now because they don't have subs being paid by any players. We've got a million dollars in there for waiving of fees and charges, particularly for tourism and hospitality groups and organisations and companies 
that are affected by COVID. We are removing the city centre levy. That's a $550,000 change for uh, our city centre businesses and all those in the levy area. So $550,000 that won't have to be forked out by our city centre businesses. By extending our development application period in terms of reduction in development fees through to the end of September, it's going to cost us a quarter of a million dollars, but hopefully that will be an incentive to get some developments up and running and get jobs and, of course, development investment in our region. And we've frozen a lot of other fees and charges to the tune of $300,000. This has a million dollars... This budget has a million dollars in it for events and conference attraction. The only way we can actually get the tourism industry and the hospitality sector and, and all of the service industries attached to it back up and running is to ensure that we have events and attraction, uh, attracting conferences back to our region. And this is what the Council's done successfully for the last couple of years. And I commend you for putting this in the budget and actually keeping it there for this year. There's a half a million dollars for better community building fund grants. We've got more investment now in rural roads and the rural roads maintenance program uh, in this budget than we've had before and funding for critical shovel-ready projects as we'll go into in just a moment. This is a busy, busy slide, but this explains what the revenue change, the 0% revenue change year on year does. Because we have to raise a cent in the dollar on the valuation of all of our properties, a 0% revenue year on year means that if you take, say, our cane farming, last year we raised $9 million out of the cane farming uh, sector, this year we're raising $9 million out of the cane farming sector. And all other sectors are exactly the same. But because there's been a valuation change, that valuation change means that some properties have had their value go up, some properties have seen their valuation go down. Some properties have seen no change. We are required to raise a cent in the dollar levy as part of our, uh, our rating system. And so that means there's winners and losers, unfortunately. We're still raising the same amount of dollars. So when you look at the residential sector, almost 60% of our residential properties will see no change or even a decrease. And you can read the rest of it. 1% of our residential properties, because of the valuation, and because of the rate in the dollar we have to set, raising no more dollars than we did last year, 1% will receive an increased rate of $250. And so we go through the, uh, the other major sectors of our community in terms of, of uh, commercial, industrial, cane farming, other rural, and then the other smaller properties that we have around the district that don't come into a large category. So the end result is 59% of all of our ratepayers will receive either a decrease or no increase in their rates at all this year. And the total revenue is the same as last year. So we'll just briefly touch on the $113 million capital works program. Councillors, uh, as you well know, we are spending $77 million in renewing our assets. We're spending $40 million in new assets and $22 million in upgrades. So it's a very, very important process for us to keep spending renewal and upgrades because if we don't, some council in the future is going to be faced with massive bills. So we don't want to be there and that's why this $113 million capital works program is an essential part of the capital budget that we're bringing down today. And what it looks like, roads and drains, well you can read there, roads and drains almost $58 million. This is what this is what consumes the dollars that we spend in council. Uh, building facilities, the sewage works, the water, parks and gardens, and, uh, and some of the other projects that we've got going. So it is a large capital spend. Let's focus on some of the areas that we uh, have spent a, a, a deal of time talking about in our briefing sessions. When we focus on livability, the Mackay Waterfront Priority Development has been a large chunk of the time that we've spent. We're allocating $3.3 million uh, to the waterfront priority development area. We're going to commence construction on the Riverside Precinct, as you know, and uh, a couple of weeks ago you've given us the OK to go out with an expression of interest for the land that we hold down there. So we now have skin in this game in terms of making this 
waterfront priority development a reality in our area. The second is the mountain bike trail. This is something that we are going to complete, councillors, and I really commend you for getting behind this project. This budget allocation of almost $2 million, uh, will go towards the complete detailed design of the project. And as you know, a couple of weeks ago, you gave us uh, authority to go out and purchase land. So once again, this is another project that from today we will have skin in the, in the game, and it's a project that we want to see come to fruition to build on livability to provide a tourism product. The Northern Beaches Community Hub is also extremely important for us as a regional community when we have uh, in excess of 20,000 people living in the Northern Beaches and very little in terms of community facility. You know, it's a community that's 50% bigger than, say, Serena, and yet uh, has very, very few community facilities. What we've done in purchasing the land and now in the uh, commencement of the finalisation of the master planning process and allocating $2.5 million in this budget is taking an another step to bringing this Northern Beaches community hub to fruition. And the animal, the animal pound has been uh, certainly on the top of our agenda for quite some time. And so, councillors, uh, you will well know that we've got some money uh, out of the state for the furthering of the animal pound process. This budget allocates $2 million to bringing that to fruition. So we will complete the tender process and commence construction on the adoption of this budget. I'm not going to go through these slides, but this is basically saying in the op operating revenue, there's a whole lot of little bits, bits and pieces and fees and charges that we gain uh, some revenue from, majority comes from our rates and charges. Where is it spent on? The majority is spent on roads, waste, sewage, water, parks, community, about 82%. And there's little bits and pieces that we spend elsewhere. So that gives you a good idea of, uh, of what we do with the, with the dollars we're about to raise today. You've been very, very consistent in the forecast of our long-term financial forecast. And I commend you for that. We'll go back one slide just to have a look at, uh, at the forecast spend for the next 10 years. This council is forecasting to spend $1.3 billion over the next 10 years. The orange section is all the renewals. So that's what we need to spend to keep our services in top, take, uh, uh, top shape so that we can continue to deliver those services in the Mackay region. The blue is, uh, of course, the new stuff and the, uh, the upgrades is the little bit at the top in grey. So that gives you an idea of the spend that this council is forecasting in the LTFF. And so what does the rest of the LTFF look like? Our long-term financial forecast in our debt balance, we have carved a lot of dollars in excess of $50 million over the last five years out of the debt of this council. It continues to decrease for the next three budgets. You'll see a slight increase in our borrowings uh, because we are faced in the... Uh, from about year four onwards with large licks of capital expenditures are required to upgrade major facilities in, uh, in all of our service areas. But it's a healthy position from which we come and uh, the, the cash position of the council now uh, on the next slide you'll see is very, very healthy. We still have $126 million in the bank forecast to decrease over the next couple of years because we will use some of that cash to actually complete some of the, uh, the capital works that we need to deliver to keep us on top of what we need to do. The red line going through there is the recommendation by the state of where we need to be in terms of a cash balance and you'll see that for the next 10 years we are forecasting well above that. So councillors, congratulations. Uh, this budget that you've uh, come together to bring down is, is a very responsible budget. It is reflective of where we are in, uh, in our state, in, in our country, in the world at the moment it is a recovery-focused budget, and I extend on your behalf our thanks to the CEO, to the uh, Corporate Services Director, and all the finance team and the directors themselves for actually putting their hands in their pockets and making sure that uh, we are going to meet the expenditure guidelines that we're going to adopt today. And with that, I move the adoption of the 2021 financial forecast and the budget for this year. Is there a seconder? Councillor May. Well, I've spoken. <laughs> Is there a speaker against? Are there other speakers? Thank Councillor May. Thank you very much, Your Worship. And that, that was a, a great introduction into the next 12 months that lies ahead of us. I, I just wanted to start by thanking uh, the CEO, the directors and all of the staff that have contributed to the formation of this budget. 
and also my fellow councillors. I think it has been a, a very good collaborative process that we've undertaken to be able to deliver the budget today, particularly with a, an election in there as well, and we have new councillors sitting around the table. So I hope that this has been a pleasant experience and a great introduction to local government for you. I think also, whenever you set down a budget, it is very, very difficult to make sure on one hand we're meeting community expectations, but on the other hand, we have to have solid financial management, and this budget delivers that today. It, it is about, of course, the recovery process that our uh, region needs to undertake. We need to get business back into business. We need to get support for community-based organisations and we need to help our clubs and, and uh, sporting organisations get back on their feet. And we've certainly had a lot of deliberations over how we can do that effectively as a council. We've also heard the cries from the business community, uh, particularly in the city centre, around the city centre levy. And therefore, in this budget, we've, we've set about abolishing that levy so that they will not have to pay that levy anymore. And then when doing all of those things, you're, you're stripping out the revenue, but we're, we're still being able to deliver the, the same services that we have in previous years. So I think it's a great, a great achievement to be able to do that. We've also been able to continue our debt reduction and $14.9 million, as the Mayor outlined in his speech, that we've been able to, again in this next 12 months, take away from the, the burden of the ratepayers in that debt reduction. I think also um, one thing that we, we need to continually work on is our asset management. And people know that when I've been in, in council, it's certainly been a strong focus for me. And I think by doing our uh, asset renewals and, and the capital expenditure in the renewals process really contributes to good asset management. And we'll be able to deliver that even further over the next 12 months. So that's a, a very strong focus for a very healthy council going forward. And then the other part, I think, is our continual lobbying for external funding. And you'll see it in the budget, we're in the detail. We are forever looking to other levels of government to be able to complement the money that council is investing in projects and programs. And we look forward to continuing those um, advocation of, of external funding going forward. I think it's been a, a really good process that we've undertaken this, this year in, with as far as the budget formation is concerned. The staff, the, the, the councillors, the mayor himself has shown great leadership in, in making sure that this process <coughs> runs smoothly. Congratulate the mayor and all of the staff and directors, CEO, for their contribution. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Are there other speakers? Councillor Jones, speaking for. Um, to support the business community on the road to recovery, council has introduced a large range of initiatives for businesses affected, um, from waiving food licences, back, backflow charges and trade waste. A 50% concession on development assessments will be impl implemented until the 30th of September, as, as you said, Your Worship. Overall, Council has um, implemented the 0% rate rise, even though um, CPI is at the 1.8%. Now, Council is absorbing that. However, Department of Natural Resources and Mines and Energy have um, released the land valuations and unfortunately that means that there have been some very large fluctuations or changes in valuations across our region. This will mean even though Council is not collecting any more money through rates than it did last year, as the Mayor has already said, uh, it will have an effect on rates throughout the region. The majority of ratepayers, 59%, will see no increase or possibly a decrease in their rates. 38% of ratepayers will see an increase of up to $250 and 3% of ratepayers will see an increase above $250 due to the land valuations. I'm proud to say that this council have also extended the discount payment period for three months as a way of assisting struggling ratepayers. We have also removed the city centre levy, as the Mayor has already mentioned. Um, there will be the $14.9 million reduction in our loans, focusing on debt reduction and our healthy cash balance forecasted at the $126 million. Doing all of these, of course, with no reduction in service levels, as has been mentioned. 
But moving forward, it is our intention to implement only moderate increases in rates, primarily aimed at no more than inflation to finance increasing costs associated with maintaining the existing and growing asset base within Council. All these opportunities to help where we can for our 2021 budget. Thanks, Councillor Jones. Are there other speakers to the budget? Councillor Bonaventure. <coughs> Thank you, Your Worship. As you know, Your Worship, this is uh, my ninth budget preparations, or tenth if you count the budget we did twice. Over the years, I've always argued my case at pre-budget preparations, and I've had a clear picture of the goal and direction that is my view of where Council should go. This year has been the hardest to find that picture. This year we were faced with, community, uh, with a community that in sections is struggling to continue and continue to struggle with the effects of this worldwide pandemic. Job losses, business closures and community uncertainty are the norm for our residents. And as a council, we have had, we've been hit with losses of revenue due to closure of council facilities. And it became clear very early that the goal of a balanced budget while maintaining services was never going to happen. To bring down a deficit budget is always a risk, as you do not want to go in too deep as you run the risk of burdening future councils and ratepayers with the job of bringing us back into the black. As Councillor Jones, yourself and the Deputy Mayor have said, it is Council's role to act in the best interest of the whole community in making decisions about rates and charges, and I agree that overall we have done, overall we have done the best we can, and have we got it right? Well, only time will tell. I am proud of this budget. But Your Worship, I do have one regret, and it would be remiss of me not to mention my disappointment in the abolition of the city centre levy that was collected from landlords in the designated area. This levy was used to fund promotion and advancement of trading and economic development of the businesses being conducted in the city centre. The monies collected by council was used for things like promoting and attracting commerce and tourism and business, or improving public amenity in the city centre through extra cleaning and maintenance or conducting and organising promotional programs, publicity, special events, entertainment programs and decorations in public places. Last year, as you well know, we reduced this levy by 50%. And if you recall, I wanted to take it further, 75%, and use the remaining money just to provide amenity and promotional programs for special events. Now, I am disappointed this year that we did not retain this levy in some format or other for the following reasons. We still have to provide an increased level of amenity to the city to maintain its appearance at a cost to all ratepayers. We will be expected to provide some form of promotional or special events, again, at a cost to the ratepayer. The elimination of this levy will put a little bit more money in the pocket of our landlords. But to be of benefit to the city, it must be passed on to the tenant or put back in to improvements to the property. Whilst this may happen, I believe it may be few and far between when you consider that 40% of our landlords are from outside the region. We already have this experience with the Commonwealth Bank building that sits idle and in disrepair. We will, also, we will all have to tighten our belts to get through this, and I believe a 50% reduction in the existing levy would have been acceptable compromise, giving us and the city centre a starting point with some funds to rebuild after COVID. Just one other point, if I may. The biggest effect on this budget will be felt from uh, valuation changes. And I would just like to put some context into Councillor Jones's point where she states that only 3% of ratepayers um, will see an increase of 250 above due to land valuation. That is correct, and it may appear a minor number. But we also need to mention that 35% of cane growers, 28% 28 of other rural, and 14% of the commercial sector are facing this rise. It is my understanding that many of them will see rate rises of over $1,000. This impost is not of our doing, but it is something we must take seriously into the future. And again I say, we need to look at a full and independent review of our rating system at some stage. Your Worship, I commend our budget to councillors. Thank you very much, Councillor Bonaventura. Are there other speakers?
Councillor Bella. You're first speaking, of all, you're speaking for the budget. You're speaking for. First of all, I'd like to thank the CEO and his staff for preparation of this budget in some very difficult times. I'd also like to take, take the opportunity to thank Dave McKendry for going and getting my jacket, which is equally as important. Over the past few uh, years, these same people, who are not only staff, they're also actually members of our community, have uh, overseen a significant reduction in our debt and have seen efficiencies totalling in the many millions of dollars in this council, uh, which I think is wonderful. I do, however, acknowledge the small number of people who will see an increase in what they're required to con contribute to this community. While small in number, the amount required of them is substantial. I acknowledge the hardship that this will cause, cause those people. I also acknowledge that by its very nature, the system we are compelled to operate under lacks true fairness and equity, and as such, I will continue to seek out and support any measures to improve the system. This year, despite best endeavours, the budget will be in deficit, which is rarely good, but is necessary. In closing, I'd like to quote the astronaut John Glenn, who in 1962, while awaiting the launch in an Atlas rocket, which is little more than a missile where they'd taken away the warhead and whacked on a crew capsule, was asked how he felt, and he replied, I felt like you would feel if you were getting ready to launch and knew you were sitting on top of two million parts, all built by the lowest bidder on a government contract. I've got to say, he wasn't feeling very comfortable but our budget is nearly as complex, and due to the work of our staff, I, however, stand a lot more reassured than he did. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bella. Are there other speakers? No other speakers? Councillors, uh, I'll put the motion to adopt our budget for 2020-2021. Those in favour? Any against? The motion is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Let's move on. 4.1.5 is the financial strategy and long-term financial forecast. We've, uh, we've dealt with this on a number of occasions over briefings. Are there questions? Are there questions? See, uh, is there anything to add? I don't think so. It's fairly well straightforward. We need to adopt then the, uh, the long-term financial forecast 2021 through to 2030. Would somebody like to move uh, the adoption? Councillor? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Councillor Mann, seconded by <laughs> Councillor Jones. Councillor Mann. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Simply to say, big congratulations to the finance team for the um, financial strategy and long-term financial forecast presented for us to adopt. The team have been working under very trying circumstances to alter the long-term financial forecast in line with the challenges the region's facing and the impacts of those challenges into the future. So I think they've done an amazing job, as usual, responding because it is a fluid document, it gets altered all the time, and the attention to detail, as always, is second to none. Um, despite the reduction in revenue streams and the rates being held at 0% increase, this council will still pay down debt in the coming year and still maintain very healthy cash reserves. I'm happy to support, that, support the adoption of the long-term financial forecast. Thank you, Councillor Mann. Speaker against. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried unanimously. Thank you. 4.1.6, the Code of Competitive Conduct Statement. Once again, pretty well straightforward. You've uh, been able to read it for quite some time. Any questions? No questions? Would somebody like to move the adoption? Councillor Mann, Councillor Jones seconds. Councillor Mann, no? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Thank you, unanimously. 4.1.7, the Mackay Waste Services Performance Plan, 2021 through to 2026. Are there questions on this? Councillor, uh, you're one ahead, Councillor Bonaventura. No questions? Somebody would like to move the adoption? Councillor Bonaventura, seconded by. Councillor Mann, Councillor Bonaventura. Thank you, Your Worship. Oh, it's fair to say waste services provide a service that far exceeds what most residents see. So let's just look at a couple of the numbers first. Uh, if we look at our uh, collection service, which is our wheelie bin, um, currently around 27,500 tonnes, and we expect it to remain about the same in the coming year. Noting that this is a large drop from back in 2015 when there was 34,000 odd tonnes collected. If I look at waste to landfill, we are the same way. We are dropping from a position of about 94,000 or 95,000 thereabouts in 2015-16 uh, to around the 71,500 at the moment and expected to remain about the same for the, uh, for the next year. 
And if we look at our meal materials recovered, um, overall we expect to remain at about 19.1% 19 19 of uh, material diverted from waste um, into recyclables. So that's a good figure. Yes, we could do better, but that's a good figure. So if I look at just a few risks and challenges, um, if we look at collections, um, and there are a number of um, challenges and risks that we'll be managing in the future. Things like the ability for our contractor and fleet to, to meet the demands of the service. Our um, industry driven, driven changes such as operating times where people could be seeking operating times at different hours which will again put an impost on council. Um, impact of changes to the Environmental Protection Act. Uh, so this could impact on how council conducts collection services to residents. So, we're hoping that's okay, but there are always those risks that could be there. If we look at um, the materials recovery area, uh, there's a number of challenges and risks, and these are market impact on commodities, changes to legislation including the banning of exports and recyclable materials, and changes in national and state policy, including similar to the introduction of the container refund scheme. Uh, just a couple more. Just in relation to landfill management, there's opportunities there, and a couple of those, firstly in diversion. If we look at diversion of construction and demolition waste from landfill through recycling, it's currently running at about 7%. Uh, however, in times of economic expansion, that stream was approximately 25% of all waste received. So if we look at the opportunities there, there is an opportunity to remove the re improve the recovery level, and I think that's one that uh, staff will work on. Um, the capture of our, uh, convert our capture of landfill gas to energy use, if it's economically viable. That's another one that they're looking at. A couple of challenges, uh, overall challenges to waste. Um, there's a risk that when growth occurs out of sequence with the planning scheme, additional investment in waste infrastructure will be required, bringing forward capital investment. A coordinated approach to development approval process is critical to ensure the best overall outcomes are achieved for the community. And the other one, again, the same thing applies there, is changes to state and national pol policy and legislation. Your Worship, I commend the Waste Services Plan to the Council. Thank you very much, Councillor Bonaventura. Other speakers? No other speakers? I'll put the motion then. Those in favour? Are you against? The motion's carried unanimously. 4.1.8 is the Mackay Water Services Performance Plan 2021 through to 2026. Questions? Somebody would like to move its adoption. Councillor Jones moves. Councillor Green seconds. Councillor Jones. Okay. Any speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Thank you. And 4.1.9 is the, uh, the grants policy. This is a pretty important document. Uh, this is the COVID recovery assistance grant that uh, we've been working on. And this is an, an inclusion now in our budget process. And I thank everybody who's had a, had a hand in bringing this uh, document to our table, which includes uh, all councillors sitting around the table because we've had quite a number of briefings on it. Are there questions? No questions, but somebody would like to move its adoption. Okay. Councillor May moves, Councillor Jones seconds. Councillor May. Thank you very much, Your Worship. I just wanted to, um, to start by thanking the staff for the production of particularly the re recovery assistance grant, something that this council has never done before, and there's probably not too many councils in Queensland that have done it before either. And it's a new um, part of our program, and, it's, and it is for this year, to help our community-based organisations and club sporting clubs get back on their feet. We've tried to make the process, and I know the staff have done a lot of work in behind the scenes in preparing the applications and preparing the assessment process of that to make it as easy as possible for community-based organisations and sporting clubs to take advantage of about the $1.2 million that we've allocated for that. There is also our continuation of our community grants program, the Regional Arts Development Fund program, there's sporting grants, there's arts and cultural grants. There's a whole range of, of grants available through this policy that are, are there for the community to take advantage of. And if we add in our Building Better Community Fund and our um, Investing Mackay, we're probably over $3 million in total um, to be able to, to give back to the community for um, these sorts of things. So I really just wanted to commend the staff for, I know that they've worked really hard to bring 
particularly this part of the policy, the, the, the recovery part of the policy, and, and continuation of all of the other grants that we process through um, councillors being on committees as well as staff um, being in the behind the scenes. So, well done. Thank you very much, Councillor May. Speaker against. Any other speakers? Councillor Jones. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Council providing this support to not-for-profit organisations through our special COVID-19 uh, package, amongst other um, available grants um, within our budget. But as a whole, the annual budget is the best that we can do uh, for our community in a short space of time. It's only been three months since the local government elections and taken into account, we have had very challenging times ahead of us. So I do want to thank again the um, staff, the CEO for... Uh, compiling um, the grants policy and everything involved within our budget. And I look forward um, to the future, and I know other councillors um, also do. We need to be aware that um, it is our responsibility for the long-term financial forecast ahead of us, and um, we need to ensure that we are not overspending um, and placing future councils um, not into a financially viable position. So um, I, commend, I commend the uh, grants policy and um, I thank you, Your Worship, and all the councillors for the input into um, us getting this up and running for our community. Thanks, Councillor Jones. Other speakers? Councillor Bonaventura? Speaking for. Thank you. Yes, Your Worship. Uh, just uh, while there are lots of grants, and as part of the community grants, I agree with Councillor May, uh, we cover so much in that area. But I'll probably just like to bring a bit of context into our, our, our new one, our COVID, uh, COVID recovery assistance grant. And Your Worship, this is positive for our region, as many of the community groups have suffered during the COVID pandemic. For example, in my own community, the Local Progress Association have missed out on at least three fundraising events so far this year, and that would have contributed over $4,000 to the bank balance. COVID has, stopped, uh, has not stopped the bills coming in, such as electricity, insurance and maintenance. The financial losses for small community groups will be repeated time and time again throughout our entire region. These community groups will struggle to survive without some form of support. And I believe this grant will capture those areas in their time of need. So I wholeheartedly support this policy and all the community grants. Yeah, yeah. Thanks very much, Councillor Bonaventura. Are there other speakers? No other speakers. Councillors, I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried unanimously and uh, congratulations. I mean, this is, this is quite a recovery step for this council in difficult times, as you said. That completes our budget meeting, councillors. Uh, thank you very much again, CEO. Thank you to our directors, especially the whole finance team and all the directors, as I mentioned before. Thank you, councillors, for your deliberations in this budget process. I declare the meeting closed.